Hi, my name is Jason Noble and welcome to a series of lectures on testing. Um, in this particular lecture, I want to talk about three points. One is why we should test, how much effort we should put into testing, and organisational issues that can arise because of testing. So firstly, let's discuss why one should test. Well, historically, developers would only be working on their own, their code base wouldn't be very large, and their programs were quite simple. So they could test them to themselves, or maybe give them to a few friends or colleagues to test them. But there was no formal validation, which meant that when it went out the door, no one really knew how reliable it was. Also, there was many more interactions and many more different environments in which software could uh, work in. And what happens when it goes wrong? What did they do to fix it? Well, they had to uh, fix the bugs that maybe come in. They may not be very difficult to reproduce them. And then they'd have to send it back out, sometimes on floppy disks. And this would be a very, very long process. We now have an industry that's built up over the last 30 odd years that is solely towards quality of software. There are different levels and different standards, but there's a lot of formalization and metrics on which software can be measured against. It can be done both manually and with various automation tools. Which leads on to how much testing should you do? Well, this comes down to your product, your target market, and the effects of what would happen if your software goes wrong. And this ultimately, is certainly if you're a business, comes down to cost. What's the cost of fixing? What's the cost uh, that may not be measurable, such as the effect on brand? Um, if you're producing a, an app on, let's say, the Android or the iOS platforms, and it occasionally crashes because of a particular um, measure within Android, maybe a particular screen size of Android that we don't commonly come across, you may consider that to be a fairly small bug and not worry about it. But you may have a very vocal user community. So back when I was doing software for banks, for example, we, in the early days of Mac OS, we had a problem with Internet Explorer 4.5. Uh, and you'll note that 4.5 didn't even exist on Windows platforms, whereby not only would the um, logout page crash the browser, it would in fact crash the whole operating system. Now, 99% of our users didn't use that operating system, didn't use Internet Explorer. However, the 1% that did were made up of journalists. So we had to invest a lot of effort, a lot of time to fix that because we knew that that um, user base was very vocal. So there's different levels of testing as well. If you're producing a banking app or an app that's involved in high-speed investment banking or something like that, you need to make sure that it works. Pretty much guarantee the whole thing. That means that your release cycles will be very long, maybe once every six months or so and you will have many levels of testing in place. However, if you are releasing some open source code or an open source app, you may decide that there doesn't need to be too much testing involved, maybe some uh, code unit tests, but you let the community do the testing. And as long as you highlight it to the community, then they will uh, measure that, the quality of the system because of that. The other thing that you can do is internal or external testing. So should you get a team, uh, hire them from externally, who that is all they do? Or do you hire internally and um, have them as a separate team or incorporate them into your own development teams? I think that depends very much on the type of testing that you need to be done. So for example, if you need a security penetration testing, it's probably better to go to the experts and go to an external agency. If it's just testing a mundane line of business application, you could probably keep that internal. Now you maybe put that into a team that's dedicated to QA across all the applications that you produce in your business. Or for faster turnaround, you may incorporate one or two people within your development team whose sole role is to do QA. Now, one of the issues that can arise for uh, developers is making sure that when bugs do arise or fixes need to be made, that enough information is given to them within the tickets so that they can reproduce the problem quickly and therefore look to resolve it. There's nothing worse than saying, when I click on this button, and they don't specify which button, 
the screen breaks. There's no information there, it's not useful. So you must make sure that your QA team, whether they are local or internal or external, provide enough information for your developers to be effective. So this leads on to organizational issues and there will be a mindset across the organization. And there may be, certainly if you're joining a project midway or quite a mature company, there may be some re-education that you'll have to do. If you're starting from a new project or a new company, then you need to set the quality issues and the quality standards in place from day one. So in either case, you need to set the expectations both at uh, the developer level and at the senior level. So at developer level, what you're trying to do is educate them that whilst it may take more time to develop particular functions, they won't have to come back to it because you've got all the testing and the quality in place, which will allow them to do new code much more often than doing debugging. For the senior management side of things, what you need to explain is, is that whilst the project may appear to be more expensive and may take more time to do, however, in the long run, it will be significantly cheaper. There won't be rework to do and you'll have happier customers. You will need to negotiate the percentage of budget that you're going to put aside towards the uh, quality checks and the testing. And this will come down to the nature of the software as we mentioned beforehand. If it's a, um, a banking app, then you will need a significant budget and a significant amount of time to be able to make sure that it tests. There's also, particularly if you're hiring external QAs, the relationship of them with your development team and how they are rewarded. Certainly in uh, relatively recently, QAs used to be rewarded, and maybe in some cases still are, on the number of bugs that they raise. Now, this sounds like a good metric, However, what can happen is, is that they raise bugs that are generally pointless and irritate uh, developers, but they are scored on it. Um, so you need to be careful on how they are, um, how they are measured and how they are rewarded for that measurement. When it comes to R&D projects, so these are new projects whereby you're trying to work out what is the best route to do, whether that's using a particular framework, um, or a particular methodology, or trying to establish whether customers will use a, a new functionality or new product. Now in this case, because there's so much rework, certainly for automated testing, it may not be worth doing it, because there's so much rework that has to be done for that. So when I enter those sort of projects, I normally keep the testing manual and then bring in automated testing a bit later on, once I know that the code base is definitely going to be part of a final product. Always beware of confrontation within the organization, particularly about the quality of a product. And try and understand, and certainly let everybody else understand, whether issues that come up with about a product are because it's buggy, or it's got a bug in it, i.e. you press a button and it falls over, or the functionality isn't quite right. For the latter, that is more an organizational and business case issue. So when I'm uh, doing new projects with, um, and meeting the senior team. Sometimes I'm turning around, particularly in areas that I may not know the industry that well, and I say, look, I can give you a product that will work and not fall over. What I can't guarantee is that it's the right product for the customers. That is up to the business to make sure that they give the right information to the team so that they can develop the right product. We've covered why you should test. Well, it gives you better reliability. It will save you money and time in the long run. Then we come on to how much testing effort you should have. Well, this will depend very much on the type of product that you have and the user base that you have and their expectations. And then we covered organizational issues. And that is more an expectation on QA, both up and down management. My name is Jason Noble, and I hope that you've enjoyed this lecture and please look out for the other lectures in this course.